Hey everyone, welcome back to Leading the Avert Way. Uh, I'm so glad that you're with me. I'm your host, Alice Crabtree. And today I have a very special guest with me. And I think you're going to enjoy this time that we have with Dwayne Gribble. Uh, Dwayne, first off, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, Dwayne, let's just talk a little bit about your favorite career. Tell me a little bit about how long you've been here, maybe some of the roles that you've had at Averett. Uh, my Averett career began in, in uh, March of uh, 1996. Uh, I was hired as a leader um, off, the, off the street. Okay. Um, at that time, um, sorry, I can't recall the name, uh, <laughs> but I started out as an inbound leader, mm -hmm. um, served the inbound leader at the OSEA, which is longer, uh, no longer exists. And, yeah. Uh, we were merged with Fulton. Uh, went on to Fulton as an inbound leader, um, excuse me, as a dispatcher. Okay. And then I've been dispatcher over a few years, and then we had a merger with Marietta. And then after that, I became an inbound leader again. And after a few years, we had a few a couple of people retire. Mm -hmm. I moved back into city dispatch. And about the last seven to ten years, I've been um, operation manager at Fulton. Wonderful. Well, we're glad that you're uh, in this role. It sounds to me like you've grown within the company. You know, at Averett, we have a saying. First off, we say we, we, we hire to retire. Exactly. And uh, are you planning to retire with Averett? Is that part of your goal? That's part of my goal, unless I win one of those lottos. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me about, so moving into operations, operations manager for a large facility like Atlanta West. Um, Tell me what are some of your favorite things that you get to do in being that kind of leader and maybe some of the areas where you is maybe not be your most favorite. Well, as a dispatcher, sometimes I kind of as an ex dispatcher, yes. uh, sometimes I seem to oversee that and tend to not sit back and relax and yeah. let the dispatchers do their work. So I have to get a little bit better and yeah. lead and super instead of supervising or doing the job. So. Um, my service center director makes sure that um, I sit back and let those leaders do their job. Um, and But overall, um, I still go out on the dock and walk the dock with the inbound and with the relay and the distribution guys and kind of just, you know, Friday night. It's got a, at our service center, we have a lot of guys that are 20 mm -hmm. plus years. Yes. So some of these same guys I came up with, uh, whether I was a, whether they were in leadership or they're back into, or, you know, dock workers or drivers, um, we have a strong relationship. So I make sure I'm seen and yeah, you guys have a great relationship on the Atlanta West um, dock and in the office. I've been there many times, been able to have some great events there. And the atmosphere that you guys have set for everyone, it truly is a team atmosphere. Tell us about why it was important for you to be with a company who promoted <coughs> from within. Why does that matter? Why should that matter to us? Tom Coffey is the gentleman who hired me back in 1996. Um, also, I also referee basketball. Okay. And at the time... Uh, Tom Coffey was a coach, and uh, a couple of days before that, I gave him a technical file and kicked him out of the game. And lo, no. and behold, lo and behold, I come in for an interview, and <laughs> this guy's interviewing me. So um, that kind of set a goal that told me how Avery was. He didn't hold any, you know, any grounds against me giving the technical file, yeah. and, and to this point, uh, Tom Coffey is the one hired me, and that's why I'm to this point. I love this story. See, yeah. being able to talk with you and, yeah. and share your story, we get to hear that. Yeah. yeah, if you could give someone a technical and they hire you, yeah, that yeah. says a lot yeah, about that's, the that's character. That's a, <laughs> a lot of character and the goal and the family ornament that we yes. have. Um, a lot of people talk about our, our, our image, yes. uh, uh, the atmosphere. You don't, you don't, um, you can, I can explain it to you, give it to you, but you don't understand it until you actually experience it. Well, you've shared with me the um, progression of your career mm -hmm. and with, a, a, you know, our fellow leaders. Talk to us a little bit about when you first started. What would you tell your younger self then? I wish I understood patience. Uh, okay. Just being patient. Um, today's, today's, I guess, people come in thinking everything is supposed to happen right away. Mm -hmm. um, 27 years it took me to get to this point, but I'm happy to this point. Um, I had to be told to be patient, things yes. going to happen. I think it's just patience, perseverance. You always think something is green on the other side of the mm -hmm. road, but it's not. So that was, that was be the key to me. 
Sounds to me like you bloomed where you were planted. Exactly. Share some advice from your 27 years of experience with Averett to a new associate who you know is interested in moving up in the company, who wants to grow, who wants to, you know, plant some seeds here and continue to grow in the company. What advice would you give them on growing into a leadership position? Again, I I think it's patience. Um, pick, Pick those who your mentor, pick a mentor, pick those who around you try to have a, a, a grasp of everything mm-hmm. get, get not be knowledgeable of everything that's going on um, at the same time again be patient and just don't think hey it's everything's gonna happen today I'm gonna be promoted now uh, and always put your head put your name in a hat when you see mm-hmm. something come up and you learn something new I think that's part of it absolutely I think that's excellent advice and for you leaders out there that, that have not been leaders very long, that's still good advice. Be patient. You know, we talk about that in Averett Way training. Be patient. Don't put a timetable. Don't put a schedule on where you should be in five years or seven years. Yeah. Be patient. Um, from the time that you've spent here already with your um, training, with your leadership training, Averett Way and Leadership 101, what are, what are some of your takeaways that you feel, even, even though you have the 27 years of experience, what did you take away so far in your experience that you're like, I'm going to take that back and I'm going to work with that? Even just just day we took the tour. I yes. probably took the tour in 20 plus years. Oh, yes. uh, I learned a lot of different things about the call center, the fitness center and different avenues. I mean, different avenues and different things that we mm-hmm. do. Um, so I'm taking that. And today, um, working with Laura, I learned a lot of different things about interviewing, uh, just uh, discipline type things mm-hmm. and the things I knew, but I was guess it was brought back to my attention now. Um, I think the training was very good. I think it's something we probably need to do more often. Again, it's probably been 25 years mm-hmm. plus for me to do it. And it was it was good. I was wondering at first why I had to be here. Yeah. Now I found out today why I had to be here. Dwayne, share with us, why do you feel it would be important for a leader, regardless if they've been here nine months or they've been in leadership for 27 years? Why do you feel they need to come back to uh, a training, Averett Way or the Leadership 101 training to help them be a good leader, the best leader they can? I think the way the time changed, the scope of people, uh, employees and associates that we hire, everybody has a different way of how they live now in 2023, social media. Uh, that's one big thing mm-hmm. I learned about social media and what yes. you can and what you shouldn't put on social media. Not that I'm a big advocate of social media. It's just that things change, laws change. Uh, not that the every way change, but right. we change and I guess we monitor things a different way. I think that's something over the 27 years that has changed and you need to move with those changes. I agree with that 100%. Do you feel it's important as a leader that um, you continue to carry the torch for the Avic culture? Do you feel like as a leader that we all need to have that torch to pass on to the next generation? How important do you feel that is for us as a company? The culture is 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 very important. Again, I, I like I, meant to, I was trying to say that earlier. I don't think I can interview you and tell you how the culture is, and you only been here a few years until you actually experience it. You you won't understand it. Um, I mean, I started out years ago with TNT Dugan, and I know what it is to be on the other side of the road mm-hmm. or the side of the side of the fence. And I just think it's a hundred percent important for those coming up to understand the Avery culture. And it's important for us as leaders to be able to coach that, to be able to lead that with them. If we don't know it, we can't lead it, right? Exactly, 100% possible. That's very important. Um, A leader with the years of experience that you have, what advice would you like to share to other leaders who are trying to identify associates who they see has the quality to potentially move into leadership? What advice would you tell them? How do how would you shape them? How would you plan to help this person grow? How would you tell those leaders or what would you tell them? First of all, I would tell them find a candidate that 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 you can model that that seems like they model themselves behind you. Um, lead them, grasp them, give them all the education that you can. Um, get them in all facets of how what it takes to run a service center, uh, whether it's dispatching, where it's an inbound leader, where it's a relay leader, where it's admin, bill of ladings, whatever. And then just mold that mold that 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 upcoming associate or into a leader. 
And I think a lot of people are, a lot of soldiers are afraid to become leaders because yeah. they just don't, they think it's just all about managing. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's, it's all about supervising, but it's also about, about a pro, uh, being approachable and being a personable person, you know, and teaching ready for culture. Yeah, I agree with that. I think sometimes we need to, as a leader myself, to be able to do that, we need to find that person where you see that skill set, where you're, where you think in your mind, this person has what it takes. And then what we want to do is we want to, as you said, mold them, shape them, chisel away maybe some of the things that don't need to be there. But that's what coaching is all about, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. And at the same time, you also got to listen. Sometimes you got to be a listener. Uh, you can't always just give advice. Yeah. And give, let them give you advice. And sometimes, hey, I learn from them sometimes too. And it's just the way of life. I think if you listen, you listen, but you know, again, mold them and get them in the right direction. I love that. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for spending some time talking about leadership, talking about the importance of the Averett Way and Leadership 101 training, and also for giving some great advice to uh, your younger self <laughs> and great advice for leaders who are coming up in the company or those who want to be a leader. We appreciate you. We thank you so much. You have a great rest of the day. All right. Thanks for having me. 